Hey guys, Sarah here. Today I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm out here in um, uh, Pony Express Parkway, Pony Express Park, whatever, I can't remember exactly what it's called. Um, but we're out here in the middle of nowhere and we're gonna be doing a day of shooting because it has been a few months since we got in some practice. So yeah, we're just down here. We brought out several of our handguns and I'm gonna go through, uh, talk about, well, Ken's gonna talk about the guns in particular and why we got these particular guns and all that sort of stuff. So bearing in mind, before we moved to Utah, I literally had zero experience with firearms and I was pretty, uncomfortable around firearms to be honest I didn't want anything to do with them but then uh, you know we got into them Ken had a couple of handguns we went out and did some practice shooting went to the ranges and that sort of stuff and slowly over the last seven years I have become really comfortable around handguns and um, we've done some really intensive training so it's not just every now and then we go out and shoot we actually do intensive training to make sure we know everything about the guns if anything goes wrong and that sort of thing so yeah this is a video explaining our journey with these handguns and why we've got the particular ones and we'll go from there okay let's get on and show you the guns okay so these are the handguns we brought out with us Ken is going to explain each one, what kind of ammo they take, and we will go from there. Okay. So when Sarah was first looking at uh, possibly using a handgun, the last thing I wanted to do was scare her. I've seen so many videos of people who think it's horrendously funny to have their girlfriend take a shot of a 44 Magnum for the first time that they've ever held a handgun, hit themselves in the face, and they think it's hilariously funny, but it puts people off shooting for a long time. We needed something that Sarah was going to be comfortable with, and the theory being that something is better than nothing. Initially we started off with a little LCR revolver, which is in 22. The reason for going for this handgun is it's quite small. Um, it is hammerless, so that means there's nothing to get caught. And with 22, it's got very limited recoil. Idea being if she's walking through a car park in the evening, she can have this in her pocket and have her hand in the pocket of her jacket and no one even knows she's got her gun with her. She wouldn't even bother pulling the handgun out if she needed to. She would just shoot it through her jacket pocket or consequently she could also have it, her hand in her handbag. So this is unloaded, but the simplicity of operation is simply pull if for any reason you have a malfunction of ammunition, all you have to do is pull again. And you just keep on pulling until it stops going bang. Very simple. The progression from this for Sarah was into the 38 Special. Exactly the same frame of gun, same manufacturer, except this is taking a 38 Special round, which is quite a lot larger and a lot more lethal. Only gives you five shots, but the same operation. All you have to do is pull the trigger until it stops going bang. It doesn't know, has no hammer. You can shoot it from inside your jacket pocket or inside your handbag without having to pull it out. One of the benefits of having a revolver is that if you are paranoid about accidentally pulling the trigger, you can set it up so the first time you pull the trigger, it goes to click because you're going on to an empty chamber, so you've got to pull it twice before it goes bang. That's your safety. And you can pull it quickly for, for two pulls of the trigger, so it's not going to slow you down much whatsoever, but it is going to be very safe. After that, when we did hiking, Sarah would use this one, which is essentially the same weapon here, same length barrel, 38 special as well, but it has a hammer. Idea being with a hammer is that you can pull it back and it gives you a much lighter trigger pull. This is quite a hard trigger pull. If you have the hammer back, it's a very light trigger pull to make it fire, which gives you the option of being a lot more accurate. We used, she used to carry this when we were hiking, 
So that if she need be, she can pull it out of her pocket and make a decisive shot. My version of that for hiking is virtually the same weapon, but it's a 357. This takes six rounds instead of the five rounds that the tourist takes. But same operation. With having these weapons like this, Sarah could pick up any of these weapons and use any of these weapons with confidence at any stage. So while Sarah was carrying the revolver, I was carrying the little SIG P238. Uh, this is a 380 handgun and it's a semi-automatic. I liked this when I learned because even with the hammer, even with one in the chamber and the hammer like this, it's still not going to go bang. That won't make it fire. You actually have to have it all the way back before it goes bang. So I could not accidentally discharge it by pulling it out of my holster and going click. I had to pull it out, bring the hammer back, and then it was ready to fire. To me, that was a safety. The reason for doing that, instead of not chambering a round, is that if you do not have a round chambered, you have to pull it out. You then have to use two hands in order to chamber a round to be able to do it. If you can have one hand where you pull it out and cock the hammer, it gives you the other hand free to push the assailant off if necessary. From there we go to a, this, so this is a single action 1911 style of handgun. This is, this SIG is the 239, which is a single stack, semi-automatic, but it has a hammer, which is double action. So you can leave it loaded, very heavy trigger pull to start with, then after that it's a light trigger pull all the way through. So this was the next progression for us. And then we got on to guns which we use more for competition, full-size handguns. We do a lot of training down at Frontside in Nevada, which is a firearms training academy. These were specifically for Sierra because of their RMRs on the top, or the red dots. Um, they're nice and heavy, so they don't jump and allows for a lot of accuracy. After Sarah had experience using uh, these handguns, she then went into this, which is the 365, it takes 12 rounds. I had this one altered for her to include the sight on the rear, um, but it's quite a nice little handgun, and this is now what she carries. This is the Hamless LCR revolver in 38 Special. This next handgun is the Taurus in 38 Special. This is a hammered revolver and this one has got a slightly longer hand grip on it. Uh, which is one of the primary reasons for Sarah to carry this when we go hiking as opposed to her concealed carry gun. It's much more accurate when she wants it to be and if she wants a very light trigger pull to increase her accuracy all she has to do is pull the hammer back first. This is the Smith & Wesson 357. Slightly heavier handgun, slightly more powerful cartridge, but the weight of the handgun does soak up quite a bit more of the recoil. This is what I'd consider to be a minimum size for if you were using as a sidearm while hunting larger game.
Okay, Ken is going to shoot off four rounds of the Smith and Weston 357. See if you can notice the difference in his style and his stance and just the movement of the gun. So that was a light trigger pull with the hammer back. So this is the first handgun I carried. It's the uh, 6 hour 238. It's in 380 caliber, which is sometimes referred to as 9mm short. Um, it is a semi-automatic, but it's a single action semi-automatic, which means that if you have a round in the chamber, like it is now, the hammer has to be back before it can go bang. It does have a safety at the top, I don't like putting the safety on and just having the hammer fully cocked. You can do a half cock for the hammer and even if you pull the trigger and it falls down, it will not go bang. This is a safety bar in there. The hammer has to be all the way back for you to be able to pull the trigger and go bang. So the way I like to use this is I use the hammer halfway back and then when I have it in my holster, I will pull it up, use my thumb to thumb back the hammer, and then I'm all set to go. The reason I want to be able to do that with one hand is so that if I need to, I can use my other hand to push away an aggressor. So I will pull it up, I will push it back, all times maintaining my finger flat along the side of the handgun until I'm ready to push out and fire. I'll show you what it's like to shoot. This is Sarah firing the SIG P238 in 38. This is Sarah shooting her carry gun, which is the Sig Sauer P365. This is Sarah firing her Sig Sauer P220 with the X5 lower. Okay, so that's our shooting for today, but one thing that is just as important as getting to know your gun and shooting it is how to clean your gun properly. It may not seem like the funnest job to do, but it is really important, especially after shooting in the desert, to take all of the weapons that you've used and give them a really good clean with the special cleaning clip, cleaning kits. So we're going to head home shortly, we're just packing up and then we will get on to cleaning our guns and I'll go through that. If you have any questions or you maybe want to know more about uh, what sort of shooting we do, what front side is and what's it all about, I, I think it's really important to have some sort of institute you go to to practice your you know, firearm drawing, your aiming, your targets and all of the technical things that come along with actually owning a firearm. So stay tuned and I will catch you guys next time. Bye. Okay. Hey guys. So one thing I didn't mention at the start of the video is we're here on BLM, BLM land. And basically the rule to be able to use this land is it, you should leave it like it, nobody even knows that you were there. Pick up any and all of your rubbish, especially if you're using shotguns. I mean, there is hundreds of these shotgun shells around there is a car that obviously you can see it has been shot at there's glass everywhere i mean this is just ridiculous it's going to get to a point where we're not going to be able to use this land to do any practice shooting because wildlife comes here they graze around here and if they pick up glass or start eating glass or anything else that's been left behind by irresponsible people, they'll potentially die, get very sick, die a painful death, 
whatever it's it's not fair we are allowed to use this land at this point but if this kind of stuff keeps getting left behind i mean there is stuff scattered all around where we set up i mean it is ridiculous beer cans beer bottles all that sort of stuff glass so much glass around pick up what you bring in and make it look like you weren't even there. I mean, this is just ridiculous. So yeah, be respectful of the land that we are allowed to use. We don't have to pay to come here and use it like you do at a gun range. It's a lot more of a relaxing environment. Beautiful views. I mean, just look at it. It is absolutely stunning here. But very soon, they're gonna stop us being allowed to come here if we leave this sort of mess behind. So take care of the area you're in and clean up. Anyhow, that's enough of me ranting on about disrespectful people abusing the land and potentially we're gonna lose our rights, but have a great day and I'll catch you guys later, bye.